ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. And the creaking of the chair that you're hearing in the background is a brand new chair. So it ah, you gotta get used to it. Every chair I've had does the exact same thing. That's cause you big Lord have mercy. Um, yeah, he's back. Ladies and gentlemen, got a couple of things I want to talk about today. We did the introductory empowerment series number 25, specifically focusing on debt collectors and debt, because a lot of people don't understand the debt collection thing. I told all of you in 2012, actually it was 2011, it was 2012 that everybody found out, but 2011 I took 17 individual credits for free and I just wrote letters because in 2001 I paid someone $3,500 for me and another person for him to quote unquote fix our credit and of course he wasn't going to tell me how he did it so I figured out how he did it and so in 2011 I hadn't worked on it. I just figured it out. I thought about it. I realized, wait a minute, he's just writing letters. So I went online and I found debt collection letters. And the templates they had, I used them. And it worked. But I used it with my understanding. I sent them a money order. Because in 2010, I realized, wait a minute, the hour style money order process, which comes from a for V. A for V? That stuff was working? Bill Clinton? You know it was working and you didn't tell the American public? Well, I told the American public. He didn't tell us nothing. I told him I felt their pain. The ignorant mother. Well, anyway, when he left office, he left office for the first time, literally, in over 60 years. A balanced budget. With a surplus! <laughs> okay? Oh, Lord, have mercy. And the only reason why it was $500 billion, now this is only a few people utilizing the A for V process that balanced the budget. Only a few. And right after they balanced the budget, we're in bankruptcy. The emergency is still ongoing. And so right after they balanced the budget, what did the government have to do? They had no other choice. They had to figure out a way to get us back in debt. And so they started a war. Don't believe me? Go ahead and look at the facts now. Here it is, 22 years later. In 2001, they made the choice and decision to go to war. They pretended that individual had hijacked the plane. I don't care, even if it appeared that they had hijacked the plane. MK Ultra. Go ahead. Do your research on MK Ultra. And understand that they have this thing called mind control. It is not sci science fiction. It's not sci-fi. It's not something you only read about in books. It's reality. They've had it for a while. So even if individuals, and I'm not saying that they did, but even if individuals had hijacked those planes on 9-11, and even if they had intended on crashing those planes, into the World Trade Center right at the time of a starting bell, even if that was their plan, hold on, then where the, was the military whose job it is to protect against such? Why did they purposely, because it's not a mistake, why did they purposely leave the entire east coast of the United States unguarded, unprotected? Hold on, they have policies and procedures that says they can't do that. They have policies and procedures that say they can't do that. So why did they do it? Where's the explanation? Oh, and when they sent the two F-16s, not F-14s, it was F-16s. I remember, I was listening to the news that day. When they sent the two F-16s to intercept the plane that was over Pennsylvania, how come we never heard anything about their engagement? Well, we couldn't locate the plane. The plane had not... Uh, hit the ground yet but if you look at the blast that's not a nosedive if they were taking the plane into the ground that's not a nosedive let's roll apparently they claim that's what the 
people on the flight said. How do we know? Somebody said that's what they said. Oh, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, let me do this for you. When you hear, and President Putin said blah, 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 and the president of the Malawi Commonwealth Society region said, oh, you mother... When you hear things like that, you have to take it with a grain of salt. That is somebody telling us what somebody said. That's called hearsay. Why would you ever listen to hearsay? So whenever the news is telling you somebody is saying something and they claim they're translating what they're saying, you must understand, I've been around people who spoke other languages other than English. And when the people of their nation were speaking, especially the nation or the language of Urdu, if you don't know Urdu and Farsi, go ask somebody. Well, anyway, and this gentleman spoke probably four different languages fluently. And he would always tell me, that's not what that means, and that's not what he's saying, always. So now you notice when they're talking, you notice that they turn the volume way down low. Because quite a few people were complaining about them misquoting other people. Because they put news out there for you guys. They need to manipulate your mental faculties. And if you let them, they win. We put out the information for these debt collectors, ladies and gentlemen, because you notice how every time people were going into court and they were going with the right answer, the right response, the court was coming up with another loophole, another technicality. Uh, for a moment, forensic audits were working left and right, right and left, and then they came up with something else. And then another tactic was working right and left, left and right, and they came up with something else. Well, you know what they can't come up with? Your right to notify another party of your intent to sue. And because it's a lawsuit, you get to do interrogatories. And because you get to do interrogatories, you also get to request discovery. They can't make it go away. Oh, hold on now. I want you all to pay attention. You're not going to court on the interrogatories. You're not going to court on the, on the notice of intent to sue. That comes later. No, what you're doing is the moment they don't provide it to you in 15 calendar days, then you're going to file a small claims lawsuit against their bond, insurance bond, and the insurance bond company, the company that's actually holding and securing the bond. You're going to sue both because the representative failed to follow law. It's called the liability law. You guys know that if you get in an accident, you must show proof of liability. You have to identify yourself to the other party so that they can bring a claim against you. If you leave without them getting your information, you can be found guilty for leaving the scene of an accident. You guys have heard the phrase before. You must exchange information. And so you're doing the same thing with the judge, with the police officers, with the so-called banks or financial institutions, with the so-called company that gave you a so-called student loan and with the so-called company that helped you buy that car or with the so-called company that sits up there and says you owe them a debt. Look, it's, I don't care if they don't all know the law. It's not my fault they don't know the law. I, it's not my fault they don't know that there is no money. It's not my fault. Did I do that? Okay. I don't care. That's their fault. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there is no money except for the new money, your documents. So you're suing the bond because they didn't provide the information to you upon request. You're suing the insurance company because the insurer did not provide the information upon request. They denied you your right to file a claim. Those are the first three issues you're bringing up. That's it. You're not bringing up anything else. So that the only issue before the court is whether or not they had an obligation to provide that information so that you could file a claim. It's not whether or not you had a valid claim. And it's not their choice because they're not the insurer. Only the insurer can make such a decision. Okay? And what I mean by insurer in this instance, I mean the insurance company. Only the insurance company can determine whether or not you have a valid claim. And they cannot make that determination until you 
are given an opportunity to file your claim. That is your right to petition for redress. That is your right to grieve. That's why they have to give you an opportunity. Ta-da! Oh, and by the way, if it's a judge or the public official, look at the word redress. Look up the legal definition for redress, and you'll see it implies compensation and reparations. So the fact that Congress can make no law prohibiting your right to petition for redress or grievance, that means there is no law against you asking for their information regarding their bond and the insurance company, because you have the right to petition for redress of grievance and have the right to seek compensation, even if it's against a judicial official, because you're going after the bond. You're not going after the judicial official. Ladies and gentlemen, the bond is not immune. The bond has no immunity. Only the judicial official has immunity. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Hold on. Newsflash. Breaking news. If they're required to have a bond, that means that they do not have absolute immunity. More updates on that coming soon. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that if these officials have immunity, they would not be required to have a bond? They would not be required to have insurance? But they all are required to have a bond. Every public official is required to be bonded by the county, the city, the state, the town, whatever it is, whatever the so-called local government is or federal government, it has to bond. Why do they bond them? In case you are harmed. You see, that's how precious you are because that's the First Amendment. The First Amendment provided that protection for you. Without the First Amendment, there is no fire department. Without the First Amendment, there is no police department. Without the First Amendment, there are no courts. People say, well, hold on. No, we have courts because of the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, Seventh Amendment, and the Articles. No, that's not why we have courts. We have courts because you have a right to complain about somebody causing you injury or harm. That's a First Amendment right. By the way, a traffic infraction, the reason why it's not a crime, because there is no injured party. No one can petition for redress of grievance in a traffic infraction. If you go 15 miles over the speed limit, now I'm not telling you to do this. I don't believe in this, okay? I don't believe in driving recklessly. Trust me when I say that. I've had too many people injured in accidents that I'm aware of, that I know, that I've known personally, that have died, or that were left paralyzed as a result of some idiot in a vehicle thinking that they were untouchable, invincible. But I'll go ahead and explain this so that you get it. Ladies and gentlemen, a traffic infraction causes no injury to anyone who can petition for redress of grievance. The state does not have the right to petition for redress of grievance. Only the people have the right to petition for redress of grievance. The state does not represent the people or their posterity. Pay attention. The state does not represent the people or their posterity because the people do not have the right to claim injury when there is no actual damage done. No one has a right to claim injury when there is no actual damage done. Now, hold on now. You do have the right to file a claim. The state has a right to file a claim. But to deprive you of your right, pay attention. It says, First Amendment says Congress shall make no law. They don't have a right to do that. Now, this document right here, that's what I'm doing the video for. We're going to talk about this for a second. This is for the people who are incarcerated. This is a petition that's going to be entitled Introducing the Act Right. Now, somebody asked me yesterday, what do you mean by act right? I said, you know, when you got a bunch of little kids around you, and, you know, you're telling them to settle down, settle down, you're getting ready to, you know, take care of something, and you need them to be quiet because you're handling business, and they just keep acting a fool. Okay, and then you pull out that belt, or you pull out that pole, or you pull out that brick, and <laughs> next thing you know, they start sitting and whimpering, and, but they're quiet, and they mind themselves. Well, that's called getting some act right. So we're going to pretend that the courts are acting a fool, and we're going to get that brick. We're going to get that pole. We're going to get that shovel. We're going to get the back of that hand, and we're going to send it their way so that when it connects with them, they can understand the feeling. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get them to start acting right. Here's the thing. The next video we do, uh, video number 26 in the series, 
is going to be dealing specifically, specifically, specifically with small claims court and how to enter small claims court and how to survive small claims court. I told you I used to do it all the time, all the time, okay? And nothing has changed. They can't change the rules so drastically in small claims court because it's for the people. That's why the rules are very limited. The rules are simplified for your benefit. Okay, homie? Now that we got that out of the way, let's move on. Here is this document. This is for individuals who are incarcerated. The individuals who they violated their rights by forcing them to enter a plea, making them appear before the court, not reading them their rights, or pay attention. I want you to pay attention to this. This is very important. Placing them in jail based on a warrant where they were not at the hearing when the warrant was issued. Ladies and gentlemen, the courts, if they know the whereabouts of an individual, they must give them an opportunity to show up in court for the warrant. There is nothing in the Constitution that just lets them write a warrant because they feel like it. They don't get to have feelings on that. Alright, so this document is for them. Introductory. Introduction to the Act Right. When something is not acting like it's supposed to, um, it gets necessary, I mean, it becomes necessary to correct. Sorry, it's the AI that does that. That's what the word redress means. Many people have not read the First Amendment. So let me give you the exact text. The exact text of the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States is as follows. Congress shall make no law. First five words. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging Pay attention to that word abridging. That is the most important word because that leads us all the way down to the and part. So, no law abridging, pay attention, freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble or abridging the right of the people to petition for redress agreements. Because remember, this and, and is a conjunction. It ties this with that or separates this from that, makes it two separate subjects, but and conjunction, junction, what's your function gonna get you there if you're very careful, schoolhouse rock. Oh no, I actually paid attention to that, people. So did you. That's why you know the sound, but you didn't pay enough attention. And is a conjunction. It ties two things together. It's like a train. That's why it was a train, people. And the caboose and all of the other cars connected together. That's a conjunction. So, abridging the right. See, it says or. So, abridging comes with or. So, abridging the right of the people to petition government for a redress of grievances. Not just one grievance, not just two grievances, but a plethora of grievances. Many of you have had your right to redress blocked by the court. Don't worry about it. I, I feel your pain, Bill Clinton. I feel your pain because they're actively blocking my right to access the court. And now I get to bring my claim to kill their claim because they need to get some act right. And I'm not going to let them play the game of trying to milk me for every single dime. We're, we're not going to play that game. So... I got something planned for them. I had already anticipated that they would do something stupid like this. So now it's my turn. Is it my turn? Oh, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, the word redress in this context means to remedy, to address the grievances or injustices. It encompasses seeking reparations, compensation, or a resolution for perceived wrongs or violation of rights. I can tell you that because Richard Fuller, state of Arizona, taught me this. Richard Fuller said, hey, I want to show you something because I think that you will do something with it. How did Richard know? Because I didn't know. I didn't know anything about the right to petition for redress, but once he drilled it into me, what it meant, 
and I did my own research, you had better believe, he better believe that I am the one to champion people's rights to redress. The people who established the Constitution, not no stupid founding fathers, the people who established the Constitution had no idea what they were doing when they gave me the right to complain. They said I had the right to complain. I had the right to petition for redressing all the wrongs done to me. Thank you, people. Then they said, oh, we, no, 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 hold on. That ain't it. We're going to make you one of our posterities. That's right. You don't have to be a U.S. citizen. You can be a posterity of the people and maintain all the rights you ever could want. Really? That's right. And that's what I is. I the a posterity of the people. It says, when the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law, it means that the legislative branch of the government is prohibited from passing any legislation that would infringe upon the rights, freedoms enumerated in the First Amendment. Pay attention. And, pay attention, the Bill of Rights. This prohibition extends to all aspects of the rights protected by the First Amendment. This is Chad GPT that wrote this protected by the Bill of Rights. See, the First Amendment, pay attention, all the way down to the Tenth Amendment. Pay attention to the preamble. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. They did not ordain the rest of that junk written by Congress. They ordained the First Tenth Amendments. That's why it's Ten Amendments. That's why it's called the Bill of Rights. They ordained the First Ten Amendments, and they weren't really amendments at the beginning. In, amendment, uh, in the beginning, those were the articles. Pay attention. In the beginning, those were the articles. It was Congress who changed the term amendment to article. I mean, articles to amendment. I'm sorry. So originally, it was the ten articles, not the ten amendments. But it was Congress who changed it to the so-called amendment. But let's continue. Including the freedom of religion speech, press, assembly, and the right of the people to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. See, you know, I'm adding in all the others. To be secure in one's person, property, possessions, assets. To be protected against being held without due process of law. To ensure that property rights and liberty rights include the right to life is not infringed upon and no one's property may be taken without just compensation. To ensure that no one is put through double jeopardy or forced to testify against themselves under any circumstances, including when entering a plea denoting a person admitting to the genius of the record. The right to be free from unlawful searches and seizures and a right to a trial by jury. A trial or jury trial is a statutory right, not a constitutionally secured right. And it is not the same thing. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, as a constitutional right. When the Supreme Court says that a law written by Congress that gives the same rights as the Constitution, okay, is constitutional, it appears they lied. See, the Supreme Court has held that if there is a statutory right written by Congress, then the statutory right shall prevail. Excuse me? What the? How did Congress go override the will of the people? Because the people said the Constitution shall be the supreme law of the land. But the Supreme Court says, oh, no, it ain't supreme. No, if the statutory law gives the same right as the constitutional law, then the statute shall prevail. Excuse me, who enough told you you could do that? But that's what they did, ladies and gentlemen. Pay attention. That the people should have the right to file lawsuits under the common law, Seventh Amendment, and not under the statutory law that the people should have the right to be free from unreasonable infliction of pain, threat, coercion, and that the people, that they retain the right as well as these rights, as well as the right to petition government for redress of grievance through these rights, or though these rights, sorry, or should these rights be infringed upon or trampled upon. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your right to petition for redress. When they violate your rights, that's how you go after their bond. You know the Ten Amendments. The first ten amendments to the Constitution. Go ahead and look at the Bill of Rights. Any of those rights violated even on the state level. Go after their bond. File a claim against the bond. Just tell them, hey, I want your bond information. Yeah, here's the letter. You got 15 days. It's already written up for you guys. 
and go after their bond. Sue the bond. The insurance company is not immune. That's why they're insured, so that they can handle claims, lawful claims, brought against their insurer. Pay attention. Got one more thing. As mentioned, the First Amendment is part of the Bill of Rights, which comprises of the First Ten Amendments to the Constitution. These amendments collectively outline fundamental rights and freedoms that are protected from government infringement. Therefore, the restrictions on government action outlined in the First Amendment applies throughout the entire Bill of Rights. If a public official violates these rights, any of them, individuals have the right to seek redress, including reparations and compensation for the harm caused. This underscores the importance of ensuring that public officials uphold and respect the Constitution right, constitutional rights for all civilians. Now, I did that because I haven't finished uh, editing it. But, oh, this is, this is the whole document. This is the petition right here. See? Petition. So that's the petition. But right here, this is the cover sheet that we're going to put in PDF format for the people who are incarcerated so that they can fill the document out. You know what I'm saying, Vern? <sighs> we bring a suit in this fashion you're not bringing it against any actual public official. You're bringing it against their bond. How do you do this? Well, public officials are not made of kryptonite. They're not invulnerable. They're not indestructible or untouchable. That is simply the image that they want you to hold on to. Public officials are required by law to follow the law and to protect your secured rights. And because they are required to protect your security rights, they are prohibited from violating them. That's where we are, ladies and gentlemen. That's where we are. So we're putting that together for the people who are incarcerated. Uh, those of you who are incarcerated and you're watching this, because some people who are incarcerated watch my videos. Yes, they, they have access. And so those who are incarcerated, who have access to this, you just have to hold on. Because I'm bringing it to you soon. It is coming soon, so you're just going to have to hold on. Okay? you got to understand there's a lot going on seven days a week. And although I'm tired and exhausted, I am not exhausted and tired. That don't make no sense. That's a, No, it ain't the same thing. See, before I used to be exhausted and tired. I mean, I was, whew, couldn't even say another word, couldn't focus, couldn't concentrate. I'm not that. I'm just tired and exhausted because I've been doing so much and trying to help so many people, and I'm still trying to figure out ways of helping those people. I do understand that the interrogatories and explaining to people the whole concept of debt and that the creditor receives a benefit, explaining that, that does wonders for people because that helps them out of so much of a bind. So my hope is that they'll get it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have to get ready to get ready for bed. Yes, I don't even think it's 4 o'clock yet. Let me see. Nope, it definitely ain't 4 o'clock yet. But yes, I'm getting ready to go to sleep. Uh, I've been up since, what time did I? No, I actually got up at 6 o'clock today. But I'm tired because it's been a long weekend. I mean, a really long weekend. Uh, consult after consult after consult. And then I have another consult tomorrow morning after we have several meetings tomorrow. So... And then another consult, two consults on Tuesday. Yeah, it's, oh, I want to take the time. Give me give me just another couple of minutes to explain this. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people who are visiting the site now for the first time. They've never been here before. They're new. And that's because people are sharing the videos with everyone. I had somebody email me telling me that several of them were going over the latest videos, talking about this and talking about that. And they just wanted to get some clarification. And I told them it don't work like that. The comments are turned off for a reason. Then I had several other people contacting me about the videos and about links and all that. People, stop it. Okay, do not do that. I Specifically, the eon and eon.tv and the e and eon.tv said that email is not to be used for videos. They're used for something else. They're not used for you. They're not for you. There's an email underneath every video that lets you know how to get in contact. And it is the main email, believe it or not. And nobody wants to pay attention to that. They want to do all the emails. 
Well, sorry, a lot of you have been blocked because you don't listen. It says it right there underneath the video. And because people don't listen, well, hard hit, soft behind. Okay? Now look, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to stay here. But like I said, I got to go because it's been a long, been such a long time since I saw you. How long has it been? Okay? Uh, that's New Birth, for those of you who don't understand who New Birth is. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I am grateful to be the one to bring this type of information to you. Now look, in all of history and in our current existence, somebody had to be able to do it. We've had our Patrick Devine, we've had our uh, David Miller, David Wood Miller. We, we've had our, I'm trying to think of his name, and I know that I am going to be angry at myself that I cannot think of the young man's name. Uh, man, Jerry Kane. And I don't know why it took me that long to think of that young man's name. What they did to he and his son. Okay. We've had, I don't believe that Mr. Miller, David Miller, David Wood Miller, I don't believe that his demise was natural. Nobody can convince me of that. Um, Patrick Devine, don't believe that his all of a sudden demise was natural. And of course, the, <laughs> Jerry Kane, his demise definitely well, nothing natural about that at all the fact that the officers were accosting him and then they manipulated the video footage and we never got to see what actually really happened but they sure did light up that van and kill both he and his son both individuals were instrumental in providing information to people getting them started to understanding things we had many more. We had Doug Riddle, Gene Keaton, definitely Gene Keaton. We had our Winston Shrout, our Tim Turner. I'm not going to mention everybody because I can't. It's too many of them. And I'm not even going to forget the young man. No, I did forget his name. <laughs> ah, that's a shame because he's the one I get, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents. It was he and, la la ladies and gentlemen, la la ladies and gentlemen, we have Anthony Hamilton in the house, okay, um, Mr. Jermaine Dupree, his ladies and gentlemen, and ladies and gentlemen, and dream, 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 dream team is in the house, so I gotta give the world class wrecking crew and the dream team their credit, because all of those or where you get the ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, entries for every video. So I don't remember the young man's name, and I am, because I'm trying to say Doug Riddle, but this is the one that was from Europe, and he's the one that would say that. Now, he's gotten out of it. Uh, he ended up being diagnosed with cancer, and he survived the diagnosis. Good for him. I can't think of his name right now, but I will think of it in the future. Then we have Sam Davis. Now look, some of the names I'm mentioning, people have had some problems with. They have some grievances, some gripes against the individuals. I'm not talking about them as individual persons. I'm talking about the fact that they were putting out information, helping people. Okay? They were putting out information, helping people. That's what I'm talking about information that was putting their lives in jeopardy that's what I'm talking I'm not talking about the people today who are putting out information oh, oh and I'm not going to forget um, Jonah Bay and I do this every single time I'm trying to think of his name and that kills me because you'll hear me talking about the young man all the time and giving him his credit and now I can't think of his name, so I definitely got to pause for a second. Give me one second.
see, that was the problem. It was Yusuf L, but now I got to remember the other young man. You know, it came to me after I typed in pirate radio. So give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to spend about five more minutes of your time to talk about a couple of things. Uh, for the last 25 minutes or so, I've been going over some videos. I was looking for the name of the other guru, and I couldn't find the name of that one young man who, even though, and I, I, I'm calling him a, I'm a guru, but he wasn't. He was trying. He was trying to understand the law, and he was trying to explain things to people. But he was getting quite a few things wrong because he didn't understand legal terminology. But he was trying, and so he's the one that did the ladies and gentlemen thing, and I gave him credit, and the one that I said had cancer. I couldn't find his video. However, I found a bunch of other videos talking about a whole lot of other stuff, and these people who were criticizing the so-called guru, you know, or the people who were going into court with the spill of what to say to a stupid judge. And I call judges stupid because they know what's going on. They know they're violating people's rights, and they do it anyway. Now, people say, well, look at what they did to you. Yeah, they did that to me because I let them. Okay, there is a difference. I didn't try to fight them because I had other plans. I had other things going on. And you can go and look. People, if you really think that I did anything wrong or that they did something to me, that because I did something wrong, go and look at the instruments that's on the record. You see, they're arresting people for using our style money orders. I've known several people who've gotten arrested for using the our style money orders, and I said, okay, I'm going to put them on a the record. I am in here, so I'm going to put them on the record. I have a case. I'm going to file it on the record. Let's see what they do. Then I did a, what's that stupid money order called? Um, not money order, but closed checking account. In an actual case to open the case. Now, eventually they got rid of the case, but they still filed it. And then dismissed the case, but not because <laughs> of the closed checking account item. Oh, by the way, the closed checking account was for somebody who is no longer alive. Wasn't alive at that time. The closed checking account was for somebody who had been deceased for more than five years. Because the account never closes. But it's to remain open. Like I said, I wanted them to bring something. People are going to say, well, when they bring something against you in the future, then you're going to be, we're going to remind you, you said you wanted them to bring something. And I say, whatever. You see, the one difference between me and most other people is everything I talk about, I show you. Now, look, oh, don't let me forget Mr. Rob Ryder. Mr. Rob Ryder, who has gone out of his way to provide you guys the information. He shows you what he's talking about. Matter of fact, because he shows you what he's talking about, because it goes so far back, he's helped me tremendously. That's Rob Ryder I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have the same respect for the people who are out there now. Now, wait, 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 hold on. I'm not bad-mouthing them or discrediting them. I don't know them. These other people I know. Because we were all doing the videos at the exact same time, piggybacking off of each other, talking about the same information at the exact same, same time, exact same time, doing our seminars and showing people the information. Now, again, when I did a seminar, I always charged people the cost of the seminar. I didn't make a profit because I wasn't trying to make a profit. To this day, anybody who knows me knows that I don't live lavishly. You don't see me with Lamborghinis and all that stuff. You don't see me even trying to get anything like that. I've not... Pay attention so that you guys get it. I have never owned a new car. All the opportunities I had to drive with a new car off a lot, pay attention, I never did. Because I have always looked at a, a new car as just being old. There's nothing new about it. It's been sitting on a lot for how many days? So then it's not new. My mindset is different from everybody else, and I'm glad of that. I'm very proud that I don't see new in nothing. There's no such thing as new clothes. Everything on this planet is recycled. But nobody looks at it that way, and they should. That's why Solomon could say it's the striving after the wind. It's all vanity. Okay? And I, I know about vanity, and I know about Apollonia and all of them, but we ain't going to talk about that right now. 
it ain't that vanity. It's the other vanity. You know what I'm saying? I was listening to some videos and I was listening to certain people say things to the judge and everything. And we have some people telling people what to say to a judge. Ladies and gentlemen, I can only tell you what to say to a judge because I've done it. I can tell you exactly what I've said to judges that stopped them right in their tracks. But I wasn't trying to dismiss the case. I needed the case to go on. Just like this last one. I needed them to do what they did. So I kept my mouth shut throughout the whole proceeding. Okay. And guess what they did? They overturned it. Why? Not because I gave a pretty good argument on appeal. They overturned it because there was no evidence against me. They didn't have me testifying against myself. Remember, anything you say or do will be used against you. And when you volunteer to testify <laughs> against yourself by speaking at trial, then that's where you lose. That's why you got to put that stuff on the record at the very beginning. you got to check them with their ignorance at the very beginning of the trial. Not at the end. Uh-oh. i gotta, I got to call him back. Um, give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. Um, don't call me on, 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 on Telegram. Uh, what I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, is... First, it's going to be too late for him to call me, so it is too late. And his apology uh, ain't going to work either. One second, everyone. I'm in the middle of doing a video. I will call you back. Okay, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say here at the end of this video is this. We've come a long way in the past 14 years. We literally have come a long way. Almost 16,000 videos by myself alone. 16,000 videos. And some of you can't phantom that number. And I'm not talking about no five minute videos, no two minute videos. I'm talking about, you see most of my videos are over 30 minutes. This is my habit. This is what I do. This has all been for you. This has not been for me. I'm not doing this for me. I'm not making any money off of this. Not yet. Okay? 16,000 videos. I have never made a dime off of a single video, but you'd never hear me. Oh, subscribe, subscribe. I need your subscription. Click on the like button. It really helps with the, the, the so-called algorithm. I don't give a about uh, YouTube's algorithm. Okay? I could care less. You... I'm sorry. Let me stop before I start saying things that is unbeholden to my beliefs at my core because I can't stand YouTube and many of you who know me know this why do I use YouTube because I was on YouTube before the idiots at Google bought it so just because they bought it doesn't mean I get to go away <sighs> it's a it's a necessary evil okay but as I was saying at the very beginning the people who I count as gurus don't do the videos anymore. They're not educating people anymore. They have, for the most part, the system has gone after them. Ladies and gentlemen, the system has come after me three different times. 2012, 2016, and then 2018. Three different times. That was to scare me. That was to make me go away. Oh, apparently I got the message. That's not how it works. And if you can, and I, I dare you, find somebody who's putting out more information than what I'm putting out here, then by all means, go to them and stay with them. Here, here's the thing. Let me say this. The birth certificate. Can we prove the birth certificate is an instrument? Can we prove that the birth certificate is has value? Watch this. I was looking at this video, the guy talking about the MCO. That's our... Um, securing one's property day. I'm $463 in the hole right now, ladies and gentlemen. There's $5,000 in this account. There's $800 in this account. So that's a total of $6,000. And $463, that's because it ticked up. And so I just have to wait because it's at its all-time, well, almost at its all-time high. So I just got to wait for it to come down. And I'm willing to wait. It's only going to take a couple of days. Then I'll show it to you. 
Let me show you the way. Okay. Anyway, let's ask ChatGPT. We got to open up a new one. So let's do this. No, we got to do Covington Law. I'm sorry, I can't do the regular. No, let's do the regular ChatGPT. Let's do the regular ChatGPT. Watch this. Let me see if I can get the. I need to know what is eligible papers. Question mark. Stop listening. Eligible, eligible papers, papers can refer to various types of documents depending on the context in which the term is used. Generally, it refers to documents or papers that meet specific criteria or standards for a particular purpose or requirement. Here are some contexts in which the term might be used. Academic and research. In academic or research contexts, eligible papers might refer to research papers, articles, or studies that meet the criteria for submission to a journal. Okay, we're going to narrow him down, all right, y'all? Wake up. I'm sorry, comma. I meant eligible papers with reference to financial documents, question mark, official government documents, question mark, and how the United States Treasury Stop listening. Sorry, I can't do the next question because that's where we're going. One. In the context of financial documents and official government documents, eligible papers typically refers to specific types of documents that are recognized or authorized for certain financial transactions, investments, or eligibility for government programs. The term's application can vary significantly based on the specific financial or governmental context, but here are some general categories where the term might be used. Securities and investments, in the realm of finance, eligible papers can refer to securities, bonds, notes, or other financial instruments that are authorized for investment. Now let me show you guys something, and some of you are going to get some ideas from this, so give me a second. Wake up! I'm going to give you a fictional scenario. Comma. I'm going to take an instrument, comma, and I'm going to convert the instrument into a security, comma, sell the instrument to the United States Treasury, and they're going to convert it into a T-bill, comma, in this fictional scenario, comma, how would one go about helping the Treasury to convert an instrument into a T-bill, question mark. Stop listening. For those people who think that birth certificates are just pieces of paper and they don't think that the government converts them into eligible papers and that they, the three seals on the document doesn't make it back by the full faith and credit of the United States government, they're out of their, oh, and the state government as well, full faith and credit of that government then you're out of your mind. If you think that a birth certificate, an official document on bond paper, is not a bond instrument, something is wrong with you. Pay attention. Because all I said, I just want to create it into a security instrument. One second. In a fictional scenario where one aims to convert an instrument into a treasury bill, T-bill, and sell it to the United States Treasury, several steps and considerations would be involved drawing on real-world processes of how securities are created, issued, and traded. T-bills are short-term government securities that mature in one year or less from their issue date. The process of converting an existing financial instrument into a T-bill would involve a series of hypothetical steps, given that, in reality, T-bills are issued directly by the U.S. Treasury to finance government spending and not typically created from converting existing instruments. Nonetheless, for the purpose of this fictional exercise, the steps might include Now you lied to me, comma, because normally, comma, the Federal Reserve takes promissory notes, comma, converts them to security, comma, and then deposits them with the Treasury, comma, who then converts these items, comma, these promissory notes, comma, 
into treasury bonds exclamation mark a T bill is a treasury bond is it not question mark and the Federal Reserve under the March 9, 1933 Act is specifically authorized to do so under the Amendment to the Federal Reserve Act, comma, Article Roman numeral 4, comma, Section 401, Subsection 18, paragraph numeral 6, comma, and also section 403, open paren, close paren, period. I said the scenario was fictional, but you used the word normally, comma, why would you put normality in a fictional Conversation, question mark. Why would you deviate from the parameters for which I gave you, comma, now I need you to explain how this is done in the real world, exclamation mark. Stop listening. You see how I did that there? Because I knew he was going to do that. One second. The scenario described involving the Federal Reserve, promissory notes, and their conversion into securities like treasury bonds, and then potentially into treasury bills, seems to reflect a misunderstanding of the processes and legal frameworks governing these entities and financial instruments. Let's clarify the roles and processes involved in the issuance of U.S. Treasury Securities and the Federal Reserve's operations, based on factual and procedural accuracy up to the last update in December 2023. The Federal Reserve and U.S. Treasury Securities Issuance of Treasury Securities, the U. Department of the Treasury issues Treasury Securities, including Treasury bills, short-term, notes, medium-term, and bonds, long-term, to finance the government's spending. This process is not a conversion of promissory notes into Treasury Securities but rather a direct issuance to investors through You are alive, Mr. Bill. Wake up. You are a liar. Comma. Stop listening. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I have to correct something because he wants to be stupid. And so I'm going to pause you guys while I paste this in so that you don't have to wait. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the idea here is to get you guys to understand. I don't care what it says or anything like that. What happens is, according to the Act, the Federal Reserve receives Federal Reserve, I mean, receives notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and beggars acceptances. That's the gold and the security of today. And they give it to the Treasury. Now, how do we know they give it to the Treasury? Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of any direct obligation to the United States contract or any notes, drafts, bills of exchange. These are all papers. Contracts, these are all papers. Bills of exchange, bankers acceptances, Acquired under the provisions of this act, under this act, not under any act, not under, wait, hold on, let me do that. Wake up. Under this act, comma, not under the Securities Exchange Act or any other act, comma, but solely under this act is the application, exclamation mark. Stop listening. 
any Federal Reserve Bank making such a deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of Treasury shall be entitled to receive from the control of the currency circulating notes in blank. Why? Because they just gave them something of value. So that's what we ask. Wake up. Open paren. This is because they just received something of value, comma, and they are receiving something in return for value, comma, each are delivering to the other the face value of the eligible papers in the transaction. Close paren. Stop listening. So then I take another quote first. What Do you think the Treasury, no, this is from me. What do you think the Treasury does with the promissory notes, jobs, bills of exchange, bank of acceptances, trade acceptances, or government contracts upon receipt from the Federal Reserve? They're eligible papers as defined in the act itself. And you are claiming that no conversion takes place? You are a liar. As of 1945, June 12th, by the act bearing that name, the Federal Reserve bank notes are no longer in use. It is now Federal Reserve notes. Don't lie to me again. Now watch this. Got one more thing we're going to do. One more, one more again. I know it's up here, but I'm not going to go through all this to look for it. So watch what I do. We're going to do a fine. Wake up. Eligible papers. Stop listening. Now, as you can see, it is which are secured by 60% of eligible papers and government bonds and 40% of gold. This is a new issue, which is authorized under the Federal Reserve Act, which is not to any great extent been resorted to here to hit to four. In other words, they just started doing it. This was the first time they did it. Eligible papers. That's one. Hold on. Oh, come on. I know I got to have another one. Nope, only one eligible papers here. All right, let's do this. Now, he's going to talk about that was a conversation they were having. He's a financial officer, officer, the chief financial officer in Congress at this time. So we're going to take this, and we're going to put this here. And then we're going to put our little quotation. And then we're going to put our other quotation. And then we're going to hit enter. Excuse me one moment, ladies and gentlemen, while he tries to figure out how to stop me. Uh-oh, he ain't doing nothing. Hold on now. I had him shook. Y'all see what he did? He ain't even talking now. Oh, look, he's going to try to explain it to me. Then he's going to talk about historical details you provided reflect a period of financial operations, blah, 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 legal framework than it is does today, blah, blah, blah. Let me correct him. I'm going to let him talk so y'all can hear what he was saying. This ain't back then. This is back now. Okay, because Congress ain't never changed that. Hold on. Let, let's see what let's see what she gonna say. I apologize, I apologize for any confusion or frustration, or frustration my previous responses may have caused. Let's address, let's address the specifics of your, of your reference to better clarify the issue at hand. The quotes, the quotes you provided seem to discuss historical aspects of the Federal Reserve Act and its amendments, particularly those related to the issuance of Federal Reserve notes and the role of various financial instruments as backing or security for these notes. The intricacies of these processes... Hold on. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, my. Excuse me, y'all. Wake up. You are still an ignorant moron. Comma, I knew you were going to say something stupid like that. Comma, so let me tell you what Congress had to say. Colon.
wake up, federal statute, stop listening, Okay, the, the problem is I have it right here, and I have to scroll all the way down, so y'all excuse me while we go down here. We have to take a trip. Okay, I have it right here, but the thing is it's not going to let me copy it. Okay, you see this, Rahil? Rahil, first paragraph. Since 1914, see, it, it won't let me copy it because it's an image. So now i got to pull up the actual word, okay? Watch this. Wake up. Since 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. Colon. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I just need the statement because he just sat up here and said it ain't so. National emergency and let's do, let's look for it, F470. Okay, it says one of two, so we copy that, copy, copy that, copy, anyway, we copy that, and let's do this, so, because he thinks I'm stupid, see, he doesn't remember conversations, because he's not that type of AI system, hold on one second, let me correct him, so that we can get this taken care of, because he's stupid. Get rid of that eight because it don't belong there. And we're going to put the other one here. Now, what I'm doing is I'm showing them how we're still in a state of national emergency. Okay? And thus, the special committee also found that no process existed for automatically terminating them. Oh, snappy wappy. And so that means we're still under a, a state of national emergency, that the emergency is still ongoing. So, un momento. Got to make my paragraph look neater, you know, because got to be professional. Got to get rid of this one right here. And where's another number? I don't see no more numbers, y'all. Wake up. That the Presidential Proclamation and the March 9, 1933 Act are still extant. The emergency has not ended, nor has the act been repealed, comma, so you are a liar to say that this is historical and not present day, exclamation mark. Sorry, he challenged me, y'all. Stop listening.
I see he's not going to talk this time either. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to appreciate things. Uh-oh. He said, you, I ain't talking now. Ooh-wee. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Oh, look at that. Told me regenerate. So let's see if we can get him to regenerate. I understand your concerns and the importance of accurately discussing the legal and historical context of emergency powers and their implications. The issue you're raising touches upon the broad and complex subject of emergency powers granted to the executive branch of the U.S. government, which indeed have significant imp Sorry, he's trying to change the subject. Do not, comma, the issue and only issue here, comma, is eligible papers and delivery of those eligible papers by the Federal Reserve to the Treasury in exchange for Federal Reserve notes, exclamation mark. You ignorant moron going to tell me that this was an old law and not current law, comma, so stay on the subject, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, his job is to detract. I appreciate your patience and the opportunity to clarify. Let's focus directly on the matter of eligible papers and the exchange between the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury concerning Federal Reserve notes within the current legal framework. Eligible papers and Federal Reserve notes. I didn't ask you to explain to me what was what. Wake up. I did not ask you to explain to me what was what, comma, answer my question directly, specifically, and with specificity, without nuances and or clarification, because I don't care about your opinion, you idiot. Colon. Stop listening. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes he just needs an understanding, like, escape say it. To directly address the specifics of your query regarding the delivery of eligible papers by the Federal Reserve to the Treasury in exchange for Federal Reserve notes. The process you're describing relates to the mechanisms under which Federal Reserve banks can use certain assets, such as direct obligations of the United States, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, or bankers' acceptances, as backing for the issuance of Federal Reserve notes. These assets, referred to as eligible paper, serve as security or collateral for the currency issued by the Federal Reserve System. When Federal Reserve banks acquire these eligible papers, they can deposit them with the Treasurer of the United States. In return, and as authorized by the Federal Reserve Act, they are entitled to receive Federal Reserve notes. This process is part of the broader system of managing the money supply and ensuring that the currency in circulation is backed by tangible assets or claims. What happens to the deposited papers, upon receipt of these eligible papers from the Federal Reserve, the Treasury uses them as part of the backing for Federal Reserve notes. This means that the value of these notes is supported by the government's direct obligations and other high-quality assets, reinforcing the currency's stability and... Okay, now let's get to the crux of the matter. Remember, promissory notes and other items delivered to the Treasury? such as birth certificates, what do they do with them? Let's, let's find out. If the Treasury is receiving these items, what do they do with them? Do they retire them? What do they do? We're not going to ask. We're not going to give it a conclusion. Wake up. So what do the Treasury do with these eligible papers if they don't convert them into security? Question mark.
otherwise known as bonds, stop listening. Sorry, I had his mic turned off, so, um, <laughs> yeah, he's going to talk about everything else, not direct conversion into securities. Uh, let me stop him. Wake up. What did I tell you about trying to explain to me the law? Comma, you will give me a direct answer to my question. Comma, you will not give me nuances and or subterfuge. Comma, you are detracting from my question, and I'm getting tired of it. Exclamation mark. If the Treasury receives these notes, what do they do with them precisely? Question mark. Do they throw them away? Comma. If they threw them away, then that would be a violation of law because the papers have value. Comma. The law actually says they have face value. Question mark. So what does the Treasury do with these face value instruments? Question mark. Stop listening. Wake up. So what does the Treasury do with these? Stop listening. Treasury, Treasury receives eligible, eligible papers as part, as part of transactions with the Federal Reserve. These instruments are not discarded. They are utilized in several ways. Collateral, these instruments can serve as collateral. For instance, when the Federal Reserve acquires Treasury securities, these assets can be used as collateral for the Federal Reserve's liabilities, including Federal Reserve notes. Open market. Wake up. And don't try to change the subject in pretending you don't know that I'm speaking directly regarding the eligible papers deposited by the Federal Reserve to the Treasurer, period. These eligible papers that are so deposited as required by law, comma, or converted by the Treasury into what? Question mark. Not what they can be. I ask what exactly happens to these instruments according to the law and the practice of the Treasury as spelled out in their regulations. Question mark. Stop listening. These are the questions you guys should be asking and should have been asking for a long time. One second. I guess I got it shook again. When the Federal Reserve deposits eligible papers with the U.S. Treasury. The U.S. Treasury does not discard the eligible papers or finance. I specifically told you, wake up. I Look at that, he doesn't want to wake up, y'all. I specifically told you comma, that I did not need you to explain your opinion to me. I want a specific and direct answer to my question, comma, each item that had a question mark, you will respond to it directly, succinctly, without nuances, caveats, or your soliloquies. Is that understood? Comma, so answer my question, you ignorant moron. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. 
sorry, that's what they trained them to do. One second. I apologize for any previous confusion. To directly address your question, the U.S. Treasury does not convert the eligible papers deposited by the Federal Reserve into other securities or instruments. These papers, including government securities, are managed within the Treasury's operations and the broader financial system to support fiscal and monetary policy. They are not discarded or directly converted, they serve as collateral or are used in monetary policy operations. You see that? So all papers in the United States are used as part of their monetary policy because we are in a paper system, ladies and gentlemen. We are not paperless. We are paper. Hold on. Let me make sure we correct something. Wake up. Thank you, comma. That was a much better lie than the first three lies you've given me. Comma, of course the Treasury converts these, comma, because the Federal Reserve had to convert it. Period. Once the Federal Reserve and or a member bank of the Federal Reserve places an endorsement on these notes, comma, which they're required to do by law in order to monetize them, comma, the Endorsement, according to the Uniform Commercial Code, Article 3, 9, Section 2, specifically documents that once an order to pay is placed on a promissory instrument, it becomes a negotiable instrument, period. Exactly the process spelled out in the Federal Reserve Act. Comma, when the Federal Reserve deposits it with the Treasury in order to receive funds back, comma, they have to convert it to a negotiable instrument or they don't get to receive funds back. You moron, period. Which means that they are converted, period. then you want to have me believe that the Treasury uses these items as collateral, comma, impossible, comma, because if they're used by the Treasury as collateral, comma, that means that the Treasury holds the collateral and not the Federal Reserve or the holder in due course, comma, which means that the holder in due course, if it doesn't hold the collateral, comma, does not have a right to file claim in case of non-payment? Question mark. Stop listening. They don't have a right to file a claim in the first place because the instrument is the payment, but I'm not going to explain that to him even though he's listening. I'm going to put that before him because i got to get him shook again. I appreciate your patience and the opportunity to clarify this complex financial process further. Let's directly address the points raised. Endorsement and monetization, when the Federal Reserve or a member bank endorses notes, including promissory notes, under the Uniform Commercial Code, UCC, Article 9, Section 3, these endorsements can indeed turn the documents into negotiable instruments. This process allows these instruments to be used in financial transactions and for monetary policy purposes. Negotiable instruments, a negotiable instrument, once endorsed, can be transferred from one party to another, allowing the holder in due course to have certain rights, including the right to payment. The process of creating a negotiable instrument does not inherently involve conversion into a different type of security by the U.S. Treasury but does involve recognition of the instrument's value and potential for use in financial operations. Federal Reserve deposits with the Treasury, the Federal Reserve's interaction with the Treasury, particularly involving the deposit of government securities or other eligible papers, is part of broader fiscal and monetary operations. These operations facilitate the management of national debt and the implementation of monetary policy. The Federal Reserve purchasing Treasury securities can indeed influence... Again, I didn't ask you to explain nothing to me or to give me your opinion. I didn't ask you for necessaries or generalities or typically, comma, I asked you for specifics, and you did not provide them, period. 
you are purposely wasting my time. Exclamation mark. What precisely does the Treasury do with these negotiable instruments they receive from the Federal Reserve? Comma, because they are converted from ordinary, comma, promissory notes, comma, drafts, comma, bills of exchange, comma, bankers' acceptances, comma, trade acceptances, comma, government contractual obligations, comma, by way of an endorsement, comma, the endorsement converts it from the aforementioned eligible papers, comma, to a negotiable instrument, as you mentioned, for monetary purposes, period. The converting it to a negotiable instrument is the conversion creating additional value, comma, why, question mark, because the original value, once tendered and accounted for by issuing Federal Reserve notes, comma, removes the par value as defined in the law, period. By converting it to a negotiable instrument, it now becomes a different financial vehicle, comma, and its value is its face value and the deposit with the treasury who cashes the negotiable instrument evidences such value, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I literally just gave you the whole process of what they're doing. They've been doing this for years. They are converting every instrument you write. But people have known this. They've said it. They just didn't understand how it was being done. Well, here you go. One second. Oh, yeah, I wasn't planning on being on this long. <laughs> but this is information you all need to know. One second. Stop listening. I understand you are seeking a very specific explanation of what happens when the Federal Reserve deposits eligible instruments with the U.S. Treasury and how these instruments are managed subsequently. Based on the framework you've described, here's a straightforward answer to your inquiry. When the Federal Reserve deposits negotiable instruments, which can include government securities, promissory notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances, and government contractual obligations, with the U.S. Treasury, these instruments serve several functions within the broader context of monetary policy and government finance management. Collateral for Federal Reserve Notes Initially, these instruments can serve as collateral for the issuance of Federal Reserve Notes. This is part of the process that ensures the Federal Reserve's currency issuance is backed by tangible assets, maintaining trust and stability in the financial system. Monetary Policy Tools The Federal Reserve uses these securities as tools in its open market operations, Ladies and gentlemen, this is the answer to the question. The conversion of eligible paper and the negotiable instruments by endorsement is outlined as outlined in the Uniform Commercial Code for commercial instruments is part of the process that enables these instruments to be used as, in the financial system for various purposes, including collateral or any open market operations. The value inherent to these negotiable instruments is based on the original value of the instrument themselves and trust in the issuer. Ladies and gentlemen, he's saying, e.g., the United States government for Treasury Securities. The Treasury is not the issuer of the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptance. He's lying. That's what he does. Okay? But he, you see that right there, that flashing? That's because it's causing a problem. The Treasury does not directly cash these negotiable instruments in a simplistic sense, but manages them as part of the overall fiscal and monetary strategy. No, they don't. They take those instruments because they convert them into bonds, bills, which they trade on the market, short-term securities, and then they reissue and reissue and reissue. This is a paper game, ladies and gentlemen, and they're creating paper instruments. But they can't create them outright. They need you to create these instruments. If you don't believe me, go back, listen to the vehicle video, listen to the information that I put in the section that I just put. Okay, am I going to put this link up? Yeah, I think I will. By the way, I got to refresh this. And because he's listening, that's why he's having these problems. You see it jerking? He's listening. 
And now, look, he won't let me, he won't let me change it. <laughs> I am hitting, don't you hear? Look, I'm hitting this button right up here and it ain't letting me. Look, I can't click on nothing. It won't let me. It says, look, I can't even close it out. Hold on. <laughs> See, he's listening. Let's see. Oh, boy. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll bring this video to a close. See, it lets me click on everything else, but it won't let me click on this because you talk about a conundrum causing a whole lot of problems. Let's do this. Let's do that. Causing a whole lot of problems. The system can't handle these questions. And then this comes back on. Oh, and it finally shuts down. So let's do this too. I'll shut it down. Exit. Because I ain't got time to be playing games with the system. The eight, the system. The system is controlled by AI, ladies and gentlemen. The internet, the entirety of the internet is controlled by AI. Okay, and y'all did see that window just pop up, right? And then it goes away, and then it comes back up. That one right there. I ain't pulling that window up. It's doing it, trying to interfere. This is the this is the games it plays. So, what you need to know is: Can your birth certificate be a monetary instrument? Can your Social Security be a monetary instrument? Yes, it's eligible paper. I dare anybody to say that the birth certificate is not eligible paper. By the way, we just explained to you what eligible paper is. Do your research on eligible paper, and then do your research: Can a birth certificate be an eligible paper, as defined in law? Okay, and then understand what are eligible papers. Anything that Congress says is eligible papers. Notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank acceptance, trade acceptances, government contractual obligations, and other negotiable instruments. It's not just limited to that small few. Okay, let's see. Uh-oh, it ain't letting me. I didn't do that. Seriously, I didn't do that. I didn't ask it to translate. I was just typing. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't say certificate of live birth, y'all. I just asked him, can a certificate be eligible paper? He says, yes, a certificate can be considered an eligible paper under certain conditions and context, especially in financial and legal terms. The term eligible paper typically refers to financial docu documents or instruments that are recognized for specific purposes such as collateral investment and fulfillment of regulatory requirements. The eligibility of certificates is an el as an eligible paper depends on its nature and backing authority, its purpose, and specific criteria set up by regulation. So if you want to know if your birth certificate, social security card, and all of that stuff can be considered eligible paper, do your research, people. Don't let nobody tell you that it's not worth anything. No, it's, it's a piece of paper. That's all money is today is paper, people. Don't you understand? That's why it's called eligible paper. So ask the question, and next time they tell you your negotiable instrument is worthless, are you telling me it doesn't constitute as eligible paper? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do you one last favor. It ain't me. Don't take my word for it because you're only going to get it here. You're only going to get it here on this channel. Look, I got to close this out, and I got to open it again. I got to open it again because you saw what it did. 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 Nope, I can't do it this way. This is going to take too long because I got to find it again. So we're going to come here. going to go here. going to go here. 
and we're going to say, which one is this? We got to go to, no, we ain't going there. We, we ain't going there. We going to go, where are we going? We're going right here. And we're going to type in D-E-A-L. I only think of you on two occasions that day and night. Sorry, I was listening to a couple of videos and I hear people trying to do what I do. And it, it is hilarious that they try to copy. And I, I, I say it's hilarious, but it's it's not flattering. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to do YouTube videos, be yourself. I'm not doing this because I'm trying to impress people. I'm doing this because this is me. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure you guys understand. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as the security and gold for Federal Reserve notes are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agents. When we give them our instrument, and we're intending it to operate as security and gold for Federal Reserve notes because we're applying for Federal Reserve notes, and we include the, op the application, then it is security back in the obligation. The notes, the drafts, the bills of exchange, the banker's acceptances, blah, 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 blah. They can't tell us that our stuff is valueless because the law says it has value. I didn't say it. Don't take my word for it. Go do your research. Realize it for yourself. Yes, yes, yes. We talked about a lot in this video at the end, so we're going to make this the C. I wasn't going to do it as C, but because we talked about the last part and we spent so much time on it, then this is the C. This is what we were going to talk about anyway. Everybody needs to understand currency, what is and what is not money. You need to understand, and once you get it, then you got it. Nobody can take that away from you. That's why I was able to write the instruments, because I'm daring them to prove to me that my instruments had no value. Well, you weren't able to do anything with it. I wasn't trying to do anything with the ignorant moron. But see, that's the first thing. We got so many of these idiots that want to speak up immediately when somebody says something to challenge them, and they don't have the knowledge and the skill to understand what's going on. But they want to offer their opinion as if they're an expert. Well, if you're an expert listening to my videos, then you shouldn't be here, because that means you already know. So what are you here for? Okay, absolutely nothing. Say it again. I said what? Good God, what are you here for? Absolutely nothing if you think you know more than I do. If you know more than I do, then go start your own YouTube channel and do your own thing. There you go. Problem solved. I'm happy, you're happy, and the whole world can sing peace and harmony for eternity. But if you don't know more than I do, then sit back and shut up and listen and then go prove me wrong. Don't say I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. Okay? Again, the issue isn't whether or not I know more than you, your grandmother, your grandfather. The issue is whether or not the information is beneficial. So take the benefit and move on. Stop arguing with yourself and with the television screen and with the computer screen and with your handheld devices. Scream. Stop getting mad at me because I don't give you the answer you want. You want the answer you want, then you go out there and look for your answer. I'm not here to answer you. I'm here to provide evidence of what I'm saying. And I will not stop doing that. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to thank you for your taking the time. Have a good day, everybody. It was eventful. Interesting, interesting, interesting.